The iPhone 16 and 16 Pro Max are now here, and although I just got them today, there's a lot of things that I initially got to try out that I wanted to talk about, like the new camera control and how useful that actually is, the cameras on the 16 and how massive they are, especially in comparison to other years. But really the question of whether these phones are actually a big enough change to upgrade this year. Back it up for a minute and let's take a look at what's in the box. This is the Pro Max model in white titanium. The box overall a lot slimmer than usual as Apple is going more sustainable each year. Opening the box you can see just how bright the white really is and I like it a lot. The rails are even a lot shinier and brighter than last year as a result of a different coating which is great to see. I still miss those stainless steel edges of past iPhones but this is getting brighter so we are headed in that right direction. In the box we also have our braided USB-C to C cable, the SIM tool, and then we have the documentation without any stickers this year. And that's basically it here. The phone overall feels a lot lighter and good in the hand. It actually really doesn't feel bigger than last year's Pro Max, even though the screen is moving from that 6.7 to 6.9 inches. The new camera control on the side is finally here after all of these rumors, and it does have a noticeable physical click even when it's off. So it is an actual button. We'll try that out a little bit later. Next up, we've got the iPhone 16 base model. This is in the new teal color. I'm excited for this one, and it really feels like the first year we're bringing the baseline closer to what the Pro lineup can do, but more on that later. The color here is actually probably my favorite Apple has ever done. It looks incredible. In the box, we have the braided USB-C to C and the documentation. This phone feels extremely light. I don't know if that's because I'm used to the Pro Max, but even going from my mini to this feels really comfortable. The back has this really nice matte finish to it, which feels great for an overall really awesome phone. I like this actually a lot. So both of these phones have some new upgrades this year. Like for instance, the camera control is the latest feature. Another new physical button on the right side of the phone that now you can press to open the camera button at any time. And then you can take a photo with another press. It's also touch sensitive, so you can swipe and you can scroll to zoom, or you can open controls for the camera to toggle between different functions essentially putting all of the actions you could do on the screen into one button, which is actually kind of helpful. So I'm finding that swiping between zooming, you do have to do a full swipe along the button to go from one to two times zoom, and then a much faster swipe to shoot all the way back to 0.5 times. It can be really fidgety and hard if you want to get to a specific decibel, but then when you move into the tool selector, it has this sort of scroll that's way easier to use, whereas something like a dial with a lot of options is a lot harder. And I also find that using the camera switcher, for example, is way easier to use to jump between those three settings of zoom versus the full dial of zoom options. And maybe that'll take some getting used to. I don't know. I'll get back to you in the longer term review. But generally what I'm finding is a lot easier on very specific actions versus a full dial. And the great thing here is that Apple is putting this onto the 16 lineup too. And that really surprised me. I've never seen a headline feature come to both the base lineup and the pro lineup at the same time. Even the Dynamic Island is a perfect example, right? It initially launched on the Pros, and then this year it's on the whole lineup. It works just as well, no sacrifice on quality, and it's really cool to see them bringing it to both. I agree with what a lot of people are saying, by the way, about the placement of this button. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. I guess if you're trying to hold it in portrait mode, then the placement is maybe just a little lower than where you would actually want it to be for a bit of an awkward reach. But then you tilt the phone into landscape and it's still just a little too far to the left and now you have to reach for it. They obviously did the best of both worlds here so that it would work in both orientations, but then made it awkward for both. We'll see if I change my mind in the longer term review and a few weeks of testing. I think I'm less excited about this camera control feature and more excited about the future of what this could possibly mean. Functionally, it works great, but does that mean that the Siri button the action button, the volume buttons, will all eventually get haptics and touch sensitivity. It just presents a lot of new options and ways to use your phone, and the fact that they didn't just put it into the Pro lineup but expanded it to the full lineup kind of tells us that it's a locked-in feature for the future of iPhones to come, and then maybe for other buttons as well. The cameras are not actually a huge upgrade this year. I don't even think I really need to touch on them that much, but there's a lot of really great software features like the new photographic styles that let you select color grading in a completely new way so that all of your photos have this similar look to them. 
You can customize the tone of the photo, and then once it's done, you can apply that to your entire camera by default, or edit the photo afterward to remove that style, which is really cool. It's overall a really cool way to edit without diving into individual specs, and so people who aren't really pros will be able to kind of swipe around and just simply get a feel for what looks right to them, and for that, I think it's really useful. Videos are also getting some updates with a new audio mix feature. So when you're recording, you can select from standard, which doesn't apply anything at all, in frame, which only captures voices of people who are on camera, and then it removes the sounds of anybody that's off camera, studio, which sounds less echoed and more like a production quality room, and cinematic captures everything around you and then consolidates them to the front of the screen, much like a movie. Here's the difference between all of them. So this is a test of the new audio mix features. This is in the standard mode. We've got uh, video playing in front of me. We've got the air purifier behind me that you can hear. There is music playing over in the kitchen in there. And we're just gonna see how it changes when we go to in frame. And then that's just focused on obviously myself and nothing on the camera. And then we move into studio, which is gonna sound a little bit more professional, a little bit more focused. And then we're gonna move into cinematic as well, which takes everything around you, brings it front and center, much like a movie. So here's all the four different modes. They sound pretty great in my opinion. There's also 120 hertz 4K video, faster MagSafe charging, better battery life, and a lot of minor updates that I'll cover in a more long-term review. So stay tuned for that. A big shout out to today's sponsor ESR who provided their Armorite Ultra Tempered glass screen protector for the new iPhones. They come with this applicator that make it really easy to align and apply without any hassle. I'm so glad brands are starting to do this more and more. The screen protector looks awesome, and you can barely tell it's there, but it also gives this great peace of mind because it's 110 pound force resistance with military grade protection. They also have new cases like the classic hybrid case with stash stand built in to the camera ring, and it feels really nice. They also have the cloud soft case for a more matte feel, and they have the cyber tough case with stash stand for a more rugged and more protected feel. If you wanna see more about these cases, take a look at my case comparison on the channel later today. And thanks to ESR for sponsoring this video and providing these accessories for the Pro Max lineup. So then you have the iPhone 16 in the base model, which comes in this new teal color. And I really don't wanna downplay how awesome this new color looks and feels. You've got this more vibrant color than we're used to on this matte finish. And then around the camera, it's an even more bold. And I just think it's the best color that they've ever made. I can't get over this. But then this year, we're getting a lot of upgrades too, coming from the Pro lineup. Like on the side, you now have the action button from last year's Pro lineup. You can customize it to still do your ringer if you want, but then you can also use it for any of the controls from the new control center or your lock screen, which is this new expanded gallery from phone controls to controls within certain apps, and it's really handy to have. You also have a new dynamic island from the Pro lineup, which helps you see more information at a glance. It also just looks really cool as a way to hide the camera in the middle of the phone, and I think that's genius. The lineup is also getting camera control, and it's exactly the same as how it works on the Pro lineup. Press to open the camera, swipe for camera controls, and then press to take a photo. Simple, easy, intuitive. I'm very surprised that all of these features came right to the base model lineup. Really the only thing I guess that you're missing from the Pro lineup is the 120 hertz display, which I mean bugs me personally because I'm used to it, but if you never had the Pro Motion display, this just won't matter to you. And then what you're getting instead is like 90% of the features from the Pro lineup for the first time ever, which is just like awesome value. You might say this is a very minor update year, and I can't say you're wrong, but in reality, Apple almost always releases phones that are faster, last longer, and then one to two headline features. So this year isn't really that different than the years before it. But I think the larger news is that the 16 got camera control. Apple could have easily just provided this on the Pro lineup. So now that it's across the entire lineup, it might just be the first year to opt for the 16 for that great value. It's sort of like a boat of confidence from Apple saying, hey, the 16 is actually worth it this year. Like you don't need to buy the most expensive phones to get the latest features. And if you want it in a smaller form factor, you can have it, which I love. And I really hope this is kind of telling for what the future looks like for Apple. Maybe we'll see another mini in the future or something, but all around, you don't have to get the most expensive phone to get the latest tech.